Okay, hey everyone, this is Darren with Crazy Minnow Studio, and in this video we are going to cover 2D expression components. And uh, we are running the latest version of Salsa, we updated that in the last video, so we're on 2.2.2. And for this video I need to pull in the examples pack, so let me do that real quick. All right, in this examples pack, we do get a 2D folder, and this has the same 2D artwork that we had in version one. So if you want to make 2D girl here, you can do that. And then we've got some switcher sequences. So let's start a new scene here. And in this scene, we'll go ahead and pull a background in because this is basically uh, the full head. And all of these, you see this say large, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then medium the same, and then small. These are basically just mouth elements that we will position so that only our mouth is changing on this. And the thing about 2D is that you really want to divide your 2D art up into areas that you want to be controlled. So it, in other words, let me zoom this in here real quick. So on this particular image, if we wanted Salsa to control the mouth, then we would want a mouth element, which is similar to what these are here, right? So this would display the mouth, but it would isolate the eyes. So we could then have separate eyes and that would allow us to run those through the eyes module and let eyes control these 2D elements. Otherwise you can't really have them all on the same image because Salsa is going to be controlling lip movement. It's not really aware of how to control eye movement. So the two can't work together that way. We're only going to be demoing Salsa in this just because those are the only images I have created here. So we have a sprite renderer. So let's go ahead and add Salsa to this object right here. Let me just do it this way. And now we have Salsa. Let's go ahead and set up our audio source, our cue processor. That's all we need. And uh, we'll come back to these settings here in just a bit. But for our Vizim configurations, let's go ahead and add a Vizim. So we have a new Vizim and we need to select uh, one of our 2D elements here. And, and since these are all set up as sprites, we'll go ahead and use sprite. The difference between this sprite and this sprite, this UGUI sprite, is this one works on a UGUI element. So if you had an image element over here, you could actually run the same expression component on that uh, image element. And uh, so let's go ahead and pick sprite. And then the other, the other 2D options we have are texture, material. Texture is if you don't have sprites and you're swapping textures out. And then materials, probably a more limited use case. I think we've gone over this in the past but uh, you could actually swap materials out as well. So that might be useful. Anyway, we'll go ahead and select Sprite here, and then we can see that we need to go ahead and either drag and drop our elements here, and it says down here we need a minimum of two elements. So if I, it, you can either drag and drop them in here, or we can go ahead and add one on there. Here, let me move this out. It looks like a little interface issue right there. Um, so we've we've created one element now we can make this rest position null which means there will not be one so if we do this that means the background element goes away so you see when i click that there is no sprite on where's my sprite renderer right here so it's removed the sprite so at rest there is no sprite on this and we're actually going to use a different sprite renderer anyway because we want to keep our background there all the time we don't want to animate our background so uh, first I'm gonna uncheck this. Let me go ahead and add another uh, empty in here. And uh, we can go ahead and put this underneath. And we'll just call this our, our lip sync. And let's add a sprite renderer. All right, so we'll come back here to Salsa and let's go ahead and link that sprite renderer in here. So let's go back in here. And then we are going to need to put our image back on this one because I erased it when I said is null. So we're actually looking at this sprite renderer here. And so we need to make sure that that is in the right order, display order. So let's do our, we'll call this a say small. 
Uh, we'll just call it, oh my gosh, oh, I'll just call it small. <laughs> okay, and uh, let me grab these. And I think I explained this in the expression components video, but you can add these in any order that you want. And what we need is we need the rest. So let's go ahead and add that one on here. And then we can drag and drop these all in once. So if I select, start with that one, and probably would help if I locked my inspector. If I start with this one, and then I shift select this one here, when I drag these on here, they will be dropped in this one, two, three, four, five, six order, just like that, okay? So let me undo that. And then if I select them in a different order using, say, control, I can bounce these back and forth, and, and that's enough to show. So when I drag and drop these on here, it will be one, nine, two, eight, three, seven. And, uh, and so it's picking the order that I'm dropping them in there, which may be useful depending on how you have things laid out. So we'll drop or undo that and we'll go ahead and drop these guys back on here. And now what we have is a set of frames that will create our say small busy. And we can go ahead and preview this and we see nothing. And the reason for that is because of our order of display here. So uh, what is this? This one is like way Way out back here. Okay, that's not gonna. Let me reset, transform on this guy, and all right. Help if I unlock this. Okay. Now let me let me reset this guy. There we go. Now we do need to have. Now he's positioned in the same spot that this one is should be anyway. Let's go ahead and and move our order and layer. We want it a little bit higher. Okay. See. So you see when I do that, it pops open there. So I'm gonna just put it at one. Anything more than zero. All right, and then this one will stay at zero so, because it's our background. Actually, we could push it way back in the back if we want to. Really doesn't matter. We just need this one to be in front of it. And uh, whoops, sorry. Okay, so we can turn this preview off and on and off and on. Okay, so that is our say small. So let's go ahead and create a new one. We're going to call this one. And you notice it copied everything from the previous one, and that's okay because it included our sprite renderer, which we want because it's this one, so it's one less thing we have to do. If we had set any animation timings or any special easings, it would also copy those over, uh, and that's fine. We we don't want these, but I'll show you how we're going to get rid of those here in just a second. So we, first off, we need to call this something else. Well, we don't need to, but we're going to. And let's come down here, and we've got to convenient delete all button here which means we now have to drop our rest back in here and then we can come in and do our mediums and i unlocked my inspector again and on this one i could since uh, in my hierarchy here they're all in this order i don't need to drop rest on there first i can i can just drop them all the first sprite is always going to be the rest sprite if i remove this one then the rest sprite is now this one um, and if i keep going we'll see that it's replacing the visible sprite which is always rest with 9 here so we don't want that. We want it to be our rest sprite, which is the mouth closed. And then again, we can preview this. Let me see that that looks good. And we can come up here and actually look at these previews like this, which is an easier way to look at them. And since we're in here, we need to go ahead and apply our triggers. So let's go ahead and do that. All we have to do is click that curve or linear curve probably works better on speech. Uncheck that. We're sitting at 0 0.08 and 0 0.06. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's stop there for this video and in the next we'll pick up and cover the settings used for Salsa 2D.